Hello, dorky me doing some kind of video for YouTube, I guess, here. I'm not very good at this. Um, so a couple people thought that I should play around on YouTube. So here I am. This is going to be short because I don't know what I'm talking about or what I'm going to talk about, really. Um, so here goes. Um, I asked people on Facebook to give me topics to discuss and I will do more of them. But I guess today I, I will start with um, Ken's suggestion of how I heard Lycia for the first time. And so I've talked about this in interviews a few times, but I guess I never really talked about it a lot, a lot. But um, basically, so clear back a million years ago, I think I was like 21 or 22 or something, um, I had like a million pen pals back when everybody did pen pals. And it was awesome because if you were like stuck out in the middle of nowhere and cool people were few and far between, it was nice because you could connect with people all over the world, blah, blah, blah. And... The, most of us remember who are of that age that we used to um, trade tapes and this, that, and the other. So one day I got a letter from somebody, Matt Wilson, who used to go by Lestat. Maybe some of you remember him from um, Friendship Books, if you remember those. So anyways, he sent me two cassettes. One was Black Tape for Blue Girl. The other was Lycia. And so I was sitting on my bed in my bedroom, writing them back, and I popped the first tape in, and I popped the black tapes in, I listened to like like a song or two, whatever, and I popped it out, and then I put the, the Lycia in, and I'm writing them back, and like as soon as the music kicked in, I was like, ooh, what's this? And then Mike's voice kicked in, and I literally stopped in my tracks and just like basked in the glory of it. <laughs> And so that's dorky, whatever, but that's it really affected me to the point where um, I was in a band at the time and I made my friends that are in the band come over and like, you got to listen to this tape, like this is where it's at, it's so emotional and deep and pretty and blah, 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 this is what we should be doing, which is really cheesy, but I was 21 years old, so whatever. And so I was obsessed with finding out who this person was. So I wrote back Matt, and I was like, who is this guy? Do you have an address? Because I had a dubbed cassette, so it didn't have an address on it. So he didn't know. So And it was funny because I had to wait for him to respond, and then he didn't know. So then, But he gave me Project's address. So I wrote to Project, and I actually got a handwritten letter from Sam with... Mike's address and I remember in the letter he even said if you don't have his address this means that you have a dubbed copy of the cassette hardy har har which now I know is like pretty awful but I never would have heard of Lycia probably for a long time otherwise because nobody I knew in the area knew who they were and being out in the middle of like rural Ohio it wasn't exactly easy to come by cool music so anyways got Mike's address sent him a letter and I, I have the letter because years later, after we got married, Sam and Lisa sent us that original letter. Um, okay, backtrack. The letter that I sent to Sam asking for Mike's address. He sent that to us framed as a, as a wedding gift, which how he even still had that is mind-boggling. But that's really, really cool. So anyway, so I wrote Mike this letter, and like we kept all of our letters that we wrote back and forth, and they're so, like... Mike's were normal. Like, Mike's were normal. He's very stoic and, like, normal. Mine were, like, so dumb and, like, fangirl and, like, oh, woe is me. Like, my life is horrible. So, like, the fact that he even wrote me back at all is hilarious, but whatever, blah, blah, blah. So, we started writing to each other, and um, since I was in this band at the time, I sent him demos of my band. And he was like, oh, you should come sing on, like, these two songs. I've always wanted a female vocalist, blah, blah, blah. So I flew out to Arizona. I sang on Nimble and Surrender. And, of course, by that time, we were kind of, like, all, like, into each other or whatever. So 
you know, it was more than just me coming out to sing vocals on a couple songs. So anyways, I got to go in the studio with Dave and Mike, and no, that wasn't intimidating at all, being this, like, dork from, you know, Manaway, Ohio, and I'm in the studio with Lysia, who I'm obsessed with. So anyways, it was cool. And then at the same time, like, a tour came up, so um, I'm really good at being trained on uh, instruments, I guess. Like, I can ape things pretty well. So I... They taught me some keyboard parts, and we went on the Burning Circle tour. And the first show I ever played live was in San Francisco at um, Winners Gone By in like front of like uh, 500 people or something, which is insane. Like that was the first time I ever walked onto a stage. So that was crazy. So I guess this is my story of the first time I heard Lycia and how it massively, obviously changed my life and how if one little detail had been different, if... Matt never wrote me back about with Sam's address. If Sam never wrote me back, if Mike never wrote me back, which would have been justified because of what a dork I was, my whole entire life would be different. Mike and I would have never been together. Dirk would not be here. So anyways, that's my story of the first time I heard Lycia and how it subsequently changed my life. So if you have any other questions or junk you want me to talk about, I guess, Post the comment below. That's what people do, right? And like, subscribe or whatever. And I hope this was moderately entertaining. I'll see you later. Bye.